Oh, and by the way, apparently we're being recorded. So like, let's keep the profanity to a minimum. All right. Especially you, Lorna. I'm looking at you. <laughs> all righty. It's now seven o'clock and um, let's see. People are are starting to, to join. I see, hey Fern, I can't see you, but I see your name, welcome. Chris Devella, if I pronounce your name incorrectly, I'm not gonna read everybody's name who's joining, but um, we are gonna um, give folks um, some time to join uh, tonight's talk of the Native Hawaiian Plant Society. If you stumbled across this link accidentally, that's what we're doing. But I think everybody is going to be joining intentionally. So we're just going to give folks um, a few minutes to um, to log on, and uh, and then we'll we'll uh, kick off uh, the presentation. Okay, I see I see people people uh, dropping in. Kind of feel like we should be playing some of that like on hold music when you're calling Hawaiian Airlines or something. Um, so, um, while we're waiting for folks to join, um, does anybody, is anybody getting any of that weird feedback we were getting prior to um, the official kickoff to tonight's uh, presentation? No, okay, that's good. I, I don't hear anything either. I just wanted to make sure that, that we're, um, Hello from Fern and Mary to all. Hi to Sebastian from Mary Santa Maria. Well, while we're waiting for uh, folks to join, I'm going to put um, Joy Tamayose on the spot and say, Joy, are you still living up in Kula? No, I'm in Haiku and it's You're pouring right now. <laughs> it's pouring right now? Which is good. We finally got some rain and we needed oh, it. Oh, so. okay. That that yeah. is good. Yeah, it is good. Maui's yeah. been um, suffering from some extreme drought. So um, it's nice when the rain is falling over an extended period of time rather than all at once in one storm where all the infrastructure gets destroyed. So definitely. Yeah. Are, are you within earshot of Koki frogs or are you beyond that zone? Yeah, we, we actually have some in, in the neighborhood, but MISC has been working really hard and some of the neighbors are pretty vigilant about it too. So, but we're trying to, trying to keep it down, but they definitely are in this area. Not as bad as in some other, other areas in Haiku, but they are here, unfortunately. Well, I would say like, I, I feel your pain, but I think I'd be, I'm like well beyond that because um, we are like overwhelmed and inundated by cookie frogs over here. And that is why I closed the window to my room so that we wouldn't be hearing them and uh, interrupting the, uh, the presentation tonight, although I will mute myself. Um, so I think, I think we could probably, it's, it's 704 right now. I could probably get things like kicked off and uh, let people join as as we continue. But um, for those of you that have joined us tonight, um, welcome to the 2022 meeting of the Native Hawaiian Plant Society. Um, I think I know everybody, but in case you don't know me, my name is uh, Chuck Kamara, I'm a former Maui resident, uh, and I am a current employee of the Hawaii Invasive Species Council, and I am beaming in from Honoka'a on the Big Island, um, 
And I did want to take the opportunity to thank the Hawaii Invasive Species Council for allowing us to use their Zoom account to host tonight's presentation. And uh, if you're not aware, HISC has been hosting a number of presentations throughout February as part of Hawaii Invasive Species Awareness Month. So if you if you missed any of the talks in the past three weeks, um, they're all uh, links to recordings of those are available on the HISC website. And there's still another week and a little bit more to go. So if you'd like to check out any of the upcoming presentations, you can join those by logging on at the uh, link that I will post in the chat, but it is on the HISP website. And uh, so before I introduce uh, tonight's speaker, I'm going to pass the mic off to Shannon and Irene, who will be taking care of some general native uh, Hawaiian Plant Society business. Thanks, Chuck. Aloha, everybody. I can't see you, but I know you're there. <laughs> My name is Shannon Papanen, and um, I'd like to welcome you to the annual Native Hawaiian Plant Society annual talk. And uh, just for background, the Native Hawaiian Plant Society is a uh, 501c3 nonprofit organization that was founded in 1980. And its purpose, its mission is to support the preservation and restoration of native Hawaiian plants and ecosystems. And our volunteers engage in informational educational efforts. That's part of what we do, like talks like this, um, to increase public awareness about native plants and the ecosystems. And uh, we work cooperatively with government agencies and public and private groups to um, on protection, restoration, and educational projects that benefit Hawaiian uh, native plants and ecosystems. And uh, we have ongoing projects that you can become involved in. We have um, volunteer work at Kanaha uh, Pond State Wildlife Sanctuary uh, we're there two times a month, every first and third Thursday morning, working on the native plants around Kanaha Pond. And we have volunteers who also work um, at Haiku Elementary School, tending the native plantings in the school parking lot there, uh, which is a beautiful resource for the students at Haiku Elementary School. And they um, do that every, oh, I forgot to put when, but I think it's, uh, once a week. You can contact us to find out when it is. And then uh, when the Kahului Library is open, uh, it's closed right now for renovation. But when it is open, it has a beautiful courtyard garden that is landscaped with native plants. And it's a really nice oasis of native plants in the middle of Kahului um, Library. And we um, tend that garden as well, to our volunteers. So. Uh, there's lots of opportunity for involvement. We also have monthly uh, service trips to other locations around the island, around Maui, that you can become involved in. And uh, you probably get the emails every once in a while from Irene, our secretary, about all of these events. So if you're ever interested in doing anything, there's plenty to do. And you can contact Irene or any one of us um, in the Plant Society to find out what's going on. And if you'd like to become a member of the Plant Society, if you're not already, which probably most of you are, but uh, <clears throat> our membership form is on the website and uh, you can join for, uh, it's $20 for an individual membership a year, $25 for a family and $10 for the student um, affiliation. So that is available as well. So welcome everyone. And I'd like to turn it over to Irene to announce some business, board business. We've had our second annual virtual election. The general response was a bit disappointing. We had 12 votes, 12 votes, all of them voting for the entire slate, which uh, so that our next year's board and officers and board are Martha Martin is president, Becky Lau is vice president, I'm the secretary. Martin Fry is joining us. 
Justin Palos, Tammy Sanchez, and Joy Tamayose. I'd like to say at this time that Lorna has just retired from the board. We are sad that this has had to happen. She's been a, a very valuable and active member for many, many years. And uh, now let's, let's get started. By the way, I just promoted, promoted a bunch of our attendees to panelists so we can look at them if, if uh, they wanna share their screens, but they're under no pressure to do so. Um, okay, so thank you, Shannon and Irene. Um, I'd now like to introduce tonight's speech, speaker, uh, Sebastian Sievert. If you have any questions for Sebastian after his presentation, um, you can type them in the chat or um, you can ask them in person because I've uh, promoted you all as, as panelists. Hey, Fern. Um, so a little bit about Sebastian. He was born and raised on Oahu and has had a long appreciation for the outdoors and biodiversity found across Hawaii. Upon graduating with a BS in natural resources and environmental management from UH Manoa, he pursued hands-on work through KUPU, an internship program that offers hundreds of service opportunities that create positive environmental, cultural, and community impact across Hawaii and the Pacific region. After a stint with the Nature Conservancy's Maui Nui Forest Program via the Kupu Aina Corps, he accepted a year-long Eola Koa internship at Haleakala National Park in 2021, 30 years after I volunteered there. He is now on the island of Molokai doing another internship at Kalapapa National Historical Park. And as if that wasn't all impressive enough, we learned last week that he also plays the cello. So tonight, Sebastian will be sharing his experience working in vegetation management at Haleakala National Park, controlling invasive species, monitoring and outplanting native species, and helping with seed collection and the native plant nurseries. And he perhaps will even let us know if playing the cello to endangered Hawaiian plants enhances their growth and survival. So with that, I am going to pass the mic and camera off to Sebastian. Thank you so much for uh, speaking to us tonight. And the microphone is yours. What an introduction. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. I, I guess I got to start now with a, a serenade you with cello to, to, to start the presentation. <laughs> um, yeah, let me switch over to um, share screen and I'll jump in. Does everyone see this? All full screen and glorious. Perfect. Um, yes, we see it. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, so to um, elaborate a little on the sort of formalities first, the, the Eola Koa internship is through the park. Um, uh, they, it has all the sort of classic essential elements of a kupu internship with a couple of things uh, layered on as well. Um, but I highly recommend uh, the program for anyone who's interested or might know some young folks who are interested in getting into uh, natural resource management. Um, it was an invaluable year. Um, I spent, well, not a, not a full year, but February through mid-December. Um, and yeah, wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, so yeah, with that, I think everyone's here, of course, is very familiar with the park, um, probably more so than I am. Uh, this is maybe more for the newer folks um, I really had the opportunity to work in all of um, the ecosystems and all parts of the park um, from the front country before the summit, the summit, the crater further east uh, into Kipulula Valley and the coastal side of things. Um, so to illustrate that, I just um, threw in a couple of um, sort of big representative photos to start us off. Um, first, the classic crater shot. Um, Got to have that to start us off. Um, and 
then sort of front country before that, slightly lower elevation. So uh, 7,000 feet and up to the 10,000 foot summit. And then here in the crater um, on a nice day, um, to the left, you can see that little white dot in the distance. If you can see my cursor is Hulua Cabin. And then, so we're looking south and to the right is the Pali and the, the summit um, down into town. Um, here, if we go a little farther into the crater, so along the length of the park, I had a wonderful clear view over to the Big Island. Um, I'd almost say we can see you, Chuck, um, past Kohala and Mauna Kea. You're, you're in there somewhere, uh, right there. Um, and uh, yeah, to the left, um, Paliku Cabin. So we're looking through Kaupo Gap right now. Um, I've only been into the crater for one major trip um, as part of the internship, and we had glorious weather throughout. So it was super lucky. And then if we head farther east, now we're into Kibuhulu Valley, the real gem of the park um, because of its sort of extreme biodiversity. Um, and then as we go farther down, so we were in Mauka, now Makai, down into Kibuhulu Valley coast. Um, you can see there's actually sort of the public side of the, the park. Um, there's a trail not too far off in the distance between the hala trees and some uh, vegetation has been cleared here ready for ko and um, milo, I believe. Uh, maybe some hibiscus hiding somewhere as well. Um, and then, yeah, fully to the coastline. So anyone who's not familiar with Haleakala Park, it's extremely diverse. Um, and I was so fortunate to be able to work in every single the ecosystem again. Um, and then if we turn the corner, heading not in the direction of Pana, but in the direction of Kihei and uh, town, um, we have the dry side, the back side of Haleakala. Um, again, a glorious sunny day. Um, so I guess to start uh, with my journey, Here's my first couple of photos arriving on my first day, um, early morning on Monday, uh, moon still out, getting to meet folks and see the buildings for the first time, the nursery tucked in here on the left. Um, and then of course the first thing is, yeah, intro, tour and issue uh, a whole bunch of gear. So um, I was given a locker, and then it suddenly looked like this, <laughs> bursting. And so I was ready for the next day um, and immediately ready to dive in. Um, and to clarify um, for anyone who might be listening later on, since it is recorded, um, I was on the vegetation side of resource management. So resource management is the larger division. And I was in the sub program of vegetation, um, but I did have the opportunity to to so jump in with wildlife now and again, um, thanks to Joy here. And, um, and then the other, there are three um, also feral animal control. Um, but I spent my year with VEG, um, the abbreviated version. Um, so yeah, my first week was kind of surreal. You see all the photos online, like, ah, hina hina, silver sword. Like, and there I was out planting I don't know, two, three days in. Uh, this was the batch from the previous season. So this was still February sort of overflow, um, heading out with one of the um, collaborating researchers, Paul Krishelnicki, um, who has a couple of plots along the slope. And we were able to help him out um, with a few of the remaining silver swords. And then of course had a, introduction to Nene right away at lunch break. Couldn't have been better. I mean, first day, silver swords, Nene walking up close, hi. <laughs> um, and then off to the next site. And again, it was a sort of a wake up to how quickly the weather changes up here. I and mean, I think we're all familiar with how 
quickly weather changes in general in Hawaii, but here it's can be drastic from total whiteout to blue skies. And you can kind of see on the left some sort of figures in the white mist um, navigating the slopes to the next outplanting spot. Um, but uh, yeah, a total blast um, for the first week. And then they got me started on um, helping out in the nursery um, while the horticulturalist was there. I was able to now and again help out with uh, some critical tasks. And to start, it was the keiki uh, hina hina. Um, so I was transplanting from the really truly tiny um, ahina hina that were just popping out of the trays, um, sort of weeding through that labyrinth of roots to pluck them out um, and transplanting into two and three inch pots and did that for about two weeks and I did start talking to them and I went a little nuts perhaps like oh you're gonna make it you're you got this we're gonna outplant you in eight months I promise you go for it um and um then before diving into the rest, we uh, got some essential helicopter training, um, which I really valued. Um, very safety conscious and um, really excellent. Um, really set a high bar for sort of high risk operations and um, it's needed to get into your work site. Um, so it was exciting to be able to get that and um, get started on that journey and then head out right away. So here are some shots of us setting up camp or a camp all set up in Kipuhulu Valley and uh, getting started with some uh, invasive control and outplanting. So uh, the classic ones are ginger and pine, of course. Um, and then to the right, uh, we brought a couple of Maoli Oli. Uh, she did Fusa to Fusa into outplant um, in a little action packer, carefully transported. So this was my first outplanting for the, the rainforest. Um, and it was definitely um, a wonderful experience to actually see a, a predominantly native forest for the first time. Um, being from Oahu, I did have a chance to briefly um, visit Mount Kaala, but that is a very different type of ecosystem. It's a bog. Um, so coming here, this was a, a really, I mean, very different to forest, um, multi-level forest um, to explore. And uh, yeah, getting to see all these new species that I wasn't familiar with and um, sort of looked familiar in, in some ways, but were different. And um, yeah, so Canavao and Sania, I believe, Mataflora on, on the bottom here. And then just taking in the views was um, just, yeah, a real treat. Uh, so from there, going back, we got a little more training, uh, a little wilderness first aid training here. Uh, one of the interns being patient with us um, as we uh, sort of figure out how to treat her and rescue her. Um, and that was perfect for, um, it's actually the perfect lead in to her Pali Ku trip. Um, this was an extra clear view um, all the way into back, into the back. You can, I mean, almost see the cabin from here. <laughs> um, and off we went again, um, really need to see it entirely different ecosystem a little drier and then again some different non-natives that have made made it in here as well um, but then you'd see large sort of iliahi along the way and um, that have clearly been there for decades or yeah even centuries it would seem um, so made it all the way and um, I can't express enough how amazing it was to take in the views. I hadn't been into the crater before that trip. 
Um, I'm sure you're all very familiar with it. Um, it's just so different to be in there. Um, it's not like any place, any other place in Hawaii. Um, and uh, something that really stood out being in the very back of the crater, things do get a little wet again. And you start seeing familiar species that you saw in the front country, like um, in the bottom right here, you see a mamane tree, but it's a tree. It's not a shrub like in the front country. It's really big um, or like a kolea tree. It's a tree. It's a, I mean, it's giant. Um, it's not like the little thing that you're caring for in the nursery. So to be able to see that, um, that plant take off and really thrive in its niche, in its sort of ideal environment um, was really exciting. Um, yeah, and then we'd get to our work uh, out here controlling raspberry, a Florida raspberry. Um, but then get to see awesome natives along the way. I like, I really love the, the Akala, um, especially with the view behind it. Um, and then we're already on our way back, always too short. Um, and got to stop by uh, Ahime, you know? And um, was able to collect a few um, Iliahi fruit along the way for a project that I'll talk a little more about later. Um, and yeah, to see how different it is in here. Same photo from earlier with the Lua cabin on the left. And then the big climb up. Um, which is really fun and offers gorgeous views again. Um, and then we were out and on to the next, um, next project, next outplanting activity. So this was the slightly so sort of drier montane environment. And in the middle here, you can see me having outplanted Aiea, which is a host species for the black burn ice sphinx moth. And I wish I had seen one, but I, I didn't. But uh, I'm, I'm very happy to have planted so many of them and hope they'll, they'll, fl they'll find our little plants and enjoy them. Um, but uh, again, great to see these giant koa trees around um, and something entirely different again from the crater and Kipulu. Um, and here, even drier on the backside, um, filled a truckload with all our uh, uh, llama, aali'i, akoko, um, nayo, um, some sertandra. Um, what else do we plant out there? Some hibiscus. Um, yeah, really neat to learn out all the species and that we test out um, in this restoration plot. Uh, for those familiar, familiar um, this is a site that I think long-term the park is looking to restore. And um, currently there's just a lot of grass control and a lot of lantana out there that needs to be controlled. Um, but it was amazing to sort of get a start on that restoration and see, be able to check in on them now and again, because we'd, we'd drive out there and water them um, every couple of weeks. And so you'd actually be able to see in real time how they're doing, like, oh, is the jalapepe okay? How are, how, how are they all reacting to the heat, the wind, because it is so windy out there. Um, and then every time we'd, we'd be out there, we'd just be willing the rain to come in because looking out east you'd see in Hana or further in Kibuhulu like the just the curtains of rain like come on you can make it over here come yeah <laughs> but no it, it never did <laughs> um, hey, hey Sebastian I hate to interrupt yeah because I'm 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 like mesmerized by your presentation but wh where exactly is this site you're talking about 
Uh, this is on, uh, in Nu'u. So yeah, backside, yeah. Just before Kipuhu. Um, but yeah, the, the sort of feral goat problem out there was a, a, a big challenge, especially during um, COVID, I think with sort of uh, supply chain challenges. So being able to make do with limited supplies to sort of make sure our plants stay safe um, was another great, uh, well, yeah, figure it out on the fly DIY challenge. Um, and then here going back to front country, but slightly higher elevation. Um, so it was more toward the end of my term. Um, I outplanted some ma'u um, ho'uli'ili, uh, the tattoo plant, also called Cisarenchium uh, acra. Um, and we weren't too certain about the exact conditions it would enjoy. So we tested out some slightly sort of more shady and sunny and sort of richer soil, trying to find spots between the rock um, for it. And uh, we're excited to see how it looks in a year. Um, and then from there, here's the nursery I spent so much time in, especially toward the latter half. Um, of my term with the horticulturalist um, sadly leaving us uh, for a different position. Um, so I ended up helping out a lot more um, and uh, sort of taking the lead on some operations there um, and trying to take care of everything that she's, she had uh, you know, yeah, cared for and uh, grown over so many years. Um, so in the foreground here, this is the view from the main entrance. Um, for anyone who hasn't visited recently, um, this is uh, the Shidea Haleaka lenses in the foreground. Um, these are, I believe, pep listed species, so fewer than 50 in the wild. And I believe there are only two populations on opposite um, ends of the crater, there are cliff dwellers. And so uh, the little mesh bags you can see um, are for our cross pollination uh, project that's ongoing um, just to make sure we have uh, good vigor and diversity. Um, so you'll see a lot of colored tags in all these pots, and um, some of them have names like, um, yeah, Agatha and. Um, Brian, and um, and just behind we have more uh, hina hina. You can see popping up if you see my cursor. And then on the third table back there, the largest of all, um, are the Clermontia samueli samuelii, um, also called ohavai. Um, these are also very rare, um, pep listed. Um, and again, so rare that we would want a, a living population in the nursery to take care of. And they actually flowered while I was um, there for the year, which was really special. And I'll have photos of that later. Um, but that's a species that's a little more uh, toward the rainforest Hana side um, is where that's found. Now going to the far side, looking back, um, on this table here, we have a bunch of Cyania, Cyania uh, Coplandii, Haleak lenses. Again, a rare species. And actually a, a project is ongoing with these to also test vigor because of their small populations in the wild. Um, there's concern about uh, inbreeding suppression. And so to be able to test out um, their seeds for viability uh, is something that's ongoing with NTBG as well. Um, and then in the foreground, some Alani, some Phyllostesias, uh, which we're actually hoping to have outplanted by now or soon. Um, and then again, bottom foreground, some uh, Hinahina. 
And here's uh, our Kupu crew while I was there. Um, had the joy of uh, getting to work with um, some folks in the wildlife and inter who dropped by day, uh, for a day. So we did a little exchange day. Um, so each of us got to learn a little about what the other was doing at the park. Um, in our case, it was um, giving a, a little tour of the nursery and then washing pots, which is a dull activity, but also very essential, as our volunteers will know. Um, it's critical to keep everything running. Um, and Mary can attest to uh, all of that. She's been invaluable um, with all the volunteer groups and keeping those going every month. Um, and here's the smaller nursery, a temporary nursery that we set up um, over a few weeks in Kipuulu on the coast, um, just to be able to grow some of the more coastal varieties. Uh, so we quickly filled that up on the right. You can see Hala in the far back, um, some Milon Ko, uh, some Nene Leao, which is a, a species that was actually, I believe, used for saddle making back in the day, and some Hibiscus coquillo, um, which hopefully will be outplanted um, in this year. Um, and uh, we, it's all capably taken care of by uh, Nakala out there. Um, all in good hands, um, miss working out there. And then um, as I referenced earlier, I did get um, did work on a little project. Uh, these are Iliahi seeds. Um, and I had to process lots of them. Here's me in the seed lab. Um, so I, I did a couple of germination trials, uh, different gibberellic acid and water treatment durations. Um, just a, a couple of basic trials, I thought. And well, there was a lot of seeds to process. Um, and after it all was done, I had not one tray, but probably 10 or so. So um, that's what happens if you collect almost 400 seeds. <laughs> it really blows up on you. Um, so, <laughs> Um, I had lots of different variations on my trials, uh, different moisture regime, different durations. Um, and then it was exciting to see um, them germinate and actually pop out of the media within four months, five months, um, when usually this Iliahi variety, the, the uh, Santalum halakalai is notoriously difficult to germinate. It typically takes a year uh, for them to get going. Um, whereas the other uh, sandalwoods, um, like paniculatum on the big island, um, and others like uh, yeah, ellipticum uh, are a lot easier and a lot quicker. Um, so it was just exciting to see any. I was expecting to sow them and not see any before I left, um, but they did show their heads. Um, and then to add on a little side project, I did a little companion planting with some of the previously germinated Iliahi. Um, so ordinarily I would have uh, paired them up with something like Mamane, a nitrogen fixer, um, but I ended up using some of the species that are commonly found in the front country and were available in the nursery. Um, so for anyone who's not familiar, Iliahi is a hemiparasitic plant. So it really enjoys having a buddy next to it to help feed it. Um, if you'd look at the roots, you can see little nodules um, where they'll join and um, be able to feed off its companion. Um, but I'm not sure this particular trial was very fruitful. I don't, uh, I don't think I saw much uh, notable here after five months, but uh, 
who knows, some other variations might be interesting as well. Um, here's a, a fun uh, compilation slide with lots of our front country species, uh, Kupawa, uh, Momane, Pukiave, uh, it's all here. Um, and then some of the more special um, plants that you might find in gulches or um, some little nooks and crannies. Um, but these are all pretty common. And then these are the extra special ones. Um, to the left, admittedly, this one is outplanted, the green sword. Um, it is normally found in the bog, way up high back in the, uh, back in the park. Um, but this one is in the front country and was, I believe, planted a little over a decade ago. Um, but is a real treat for visitors wandering around near Hosber on that little loop trail. And it was flowering this year. Um, so yeah, gorgeous. And then to the right is Geranium arboreum, um, a real special one um, being the only bird pollinated geranium in the world. But um, you are all familiar with all of that already. <laughs> um, and then as if all of that wasn't enough, I also, um, got the chance to help out INM, the inventorying, inventorying and monitoring program um, with some stream monitoring. So stream surveys, uh, water quality and assessments. Um, so I joined folks out at various streams on the backside toward Kipuhulu and uh, was able to participate in some so turbidity tests and salinity or chemical composition. Um, so getting to know all the, the tools of the trade and what, what things are, uh, what folks are looking for um, in stream quality. And over lunch break, also got a chance to look at the wildlife. So um, I challenge you all to find the two dozen oopu in this flock photo <laughs> they're hiding in there you can see some of them um i think we we almost saw all varieties all species um yeah really special and then on top of that um was able to help out or rather join wildlife uh, by invitation and um, get to see uh all the surveying they're doing, specifically the Wa'u burrows. So uh, this is one of their biotechs showing me how they're uh, tracking activity, whether they're, it's an active burrow, put some toothpicks along the, the entrance, um, see if they get knocked over. And then I got to uh, head out with them and look for some of my own and came across one that was a little away from the rest in an odd location and unfortunately came back later and uh, found that one of them didn't land right and um, unfortunately with all the vegetation and not being able to sort of find that landing spot and the burrow just um, straight hit the ground um, but uh explains why I think um, the what we tend to prefer the sort of cinder high elevation, smoother, clearer locations. Um, so it was sad to see, but also um, great experience to be able to partake in all of it. Um, and then to top it all off, the cherry on top of everything, even though it's not plant related, I know. Um, <laughs> Uh, helping out with some nene banding. Um, and then back to our silver swords. This was our very last outplanting. A big shout out to Mary and the crew and some of the Kupu folks who joined us. And uh, I think even Maui Nui Seabird and uh, Seabird Project joining us. Um, it was a colder event than usual. Um, 
Others were very sunny and great views, but this one was threatening to rain and uh, just pretty cold. Everyone huddled up, but we powered through it. And um, yeah, thanks to everyone, we got, I think, over 1,500 silver swords outplanted this year or this past year. So that was a real success story. Um, packed all the trucks, the beds, the cabs, overflowing with ahihim. <laughs> it was a sight to behold. <laughs> so yeah, big thank you. And then that was it. It, it all came to an end far too soon. Um, this is me on the left in the office um, on probably my last day. Um, and on the right, um, sort of a nice uh, late morning snow enjoying on the summit. Um, and then for all of you, a ton of plant photos now. Um, everything from sort of the wetter side, um, with kind of all, and well, I'll, I'll throw in a snail too. You won't kill me for a snail. Um, and uh, some Sania, um splenifolia, um, really neat. And then the ferns that I don't know nearly well enough. And then on the dry side, all the species that I sort of mentioned earlier, hibiscus, um, peely grass, um, the ave aveo, um, a coco, ali, um, and then here in the nursery, the fabulous uh, Clermontia semi-alei, um, ohavai flowering um, with a little mist after a water, just, <laughs> just the perfect morning shot. And then, um, yeah, some uh, special, I think this is uh, Sayane Horida uh, that we did not uh, end up being able to grow. We got some cuttings uh, earlier in the year and they just didn't want to take, unfortunately. Um, and some more of my favorites. Um, really love Ko'oko'olau, -ko the Bidens, uh, Mikrampa. Um, and yeah. Uh, the Mauhoulili flowering, um, Nohan, the geranium, um, and ooh, that's it. Big mahalo to everyone. I cannot thank you all enough. It was a wonderful experience. Outstanding. Those were amazing uh, photos, and um, I really have to thank you for taking me um, on a little like nostalgia walk down memory lane. Because as I said, I I started as a volunteer at Haleakala National Park 30 years ago, and I was a biology graduate as an un, as my undergraduate major, and it was Haleakala National Park that converted me into a botanist. So um, I think I've made everybody a panelist now. So if anybody would like to ask any questions of Sebastian, um, you have um, the opportunity to do that now. Um, you can share your, your own audio and ask them in person if you'd like. If you're shy and wanna type in a question, feel free to do so. You can share your video, I believe. Um, I'll yeah. kick off the questions by asking Sebastian. So um, seeing as you got to see pretty much almost all of the national park, was there a, a particular region or ecosystem that was your favorite? And was there a particular plant that was your favorite? Or is that like asking which of your children is, is your favorite, which you're too young, but for some <laughs> It is something like that. It's difficult to pick one because they're they're all so different. And um, having spent so little time, um, although it was a year, comparatively little time in each, 
Um, I think I, I probably would have to say Kipuru Valley being my favorite. It's just, you're just mm -hmm. in it. And um, you can just stumble across amazing plants um, if you have the eye for it and have just honed into what you commonly see and then something else that, oh, that, that is a little out of place. Oh, what do we have here? Um, so I, I think I really am amazed at the sort of diversity of the, the Ciania, the Splenifolia was really neat to see. Um, and, um, Shoot, there was one other, the, I think the, the Horida was amazing. Um, I think just because it's something you, I guess I don't expect to see with the, uh, the points on the leaf surface, just because I associate that so much with protection against predators and that not typically being found here. Um, but yeah, I, I couldn't pick. It's, it was all so wonderful. Yeah, I put you on the spot, but I, I would agree. When you see um, some of these like cyanias growing in their native habitat, it's like, it's like you went back in a time machine and are like, you know, you expect like a dinosaur to come like walking through the forest or something. They look prehistoric, especially yeah. the spiny prickly ones. Um, so yeah, those are those are excellent choices. But yeah, you you can't really pick one. It's like asking what your favorite ice cream is. You know, you might have one, but really you like them all. So yeah. um, does anybody else have any um, questions or comments they'd like to share yeah. with Sebastian? Please feel free to do so. Yeah, Sebastian, since Mary keeps disappearing for whatever reason, <laughs> our computer has one person in and the other one disappears. Um, is there any word, or maybe Joy knows, for a botanist or a new horticulturist at the park? Well, uh, uh, Joy probably knows maybe the more current situation on that. Last I heard was uh, they're they're trying to get the paperwork in and get things rolling, but things were stuck in in the system, so to speak. But uh, hopefully, sometime soon. Do you have an update on that, Joy? There was a tentative offer, and of course there's pending, pending all the background checks and all that, but um, Exciting. it's somebody that's on, on listening today, so, <laughs> but I don't think um, I have the liberty to say, but it'll be Got announced it. officially soon. <laughs> Fantastic. But you did a lot of wonderful work, Sebastian, and it was so nice having you up there did a great presentation and I'm so glad that everyone here was able to listen to it live. And it was just great to have you. Um, you did such a wonderful job filling in because we had so many staff leave during, during the year. The pandemic was definitely not as bad, I guess, the second year because we were able to do field work. But Sebastian, you filled in so many. You, did, you took care of the nursery. We didn't have a horticulturist. You basically took it over and made sure everything was fine. So, and you helped out with all the different projects that RM was doing. So it was great to have you there, and it was so much fun working with you. So, thanks for thanks for being there, and so glad that you're at Kalapapa and getting to do something similar but different. So, thanks again. Thank you so much. Yeah, I I already am I'm missing Haleakala, and uh, yeah. Had a wonderful time. Thank you so much. And yeah, it's it's it was great working with absolutely everyone. I couldn't have asked for a better team. So yeah. <laughs> Anybody else uh, have any questions? Um, if not, I, I wanted to ask one. Um, before you came to Haleakala, did you have an interest in, in botany at all? Um, or was this something that you acquired on, um, in your position? 
I think I was always more interested in the, the vegetation side of things. Uh, forest ecology uh, is what I specialized in um, in my degree. Um, and I've always been, if not necessarily um, interested in the sort of minute details of uh, botany and pathology and um, sort of horticultural side of things. Um, always the larger, I always appreciate and enjoy the larger forest ecosystem and how everything functioned together. Um, and then having started um, working more in the nursery at Haleakala, I think I really enjoyed that um, a great deal and being able to dive into so the, the details and all the facets of being able to grow those species um, was really eye-opening. And um, I think definitely um, strengthened my appreciation for botany and my interest in it. Um, so I think I'm, I'm, I'm always interested in all of it. I'm not a, a true sort of specialist just yet. Um, but yeah, absolutely love it. You're young, you still have time. You don't have to pick anything yet. <laughs> Mary truly is leaping in and out of the pond there. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to, you're treading water right now, Mary. <laughs> don't get pulled in. Um, okay, well, if, if nobody has any uh, other questions, I, I do have another one for you. So you're, yeah. you're currently at Kalapapa. Um, mm -hmm. Are you doing like similar work there? Do they have a, an outplanting, a weed control program? Or are you just, what, oh yeah, exactly. What are you doing there now? Yeah, um, so it's been uh, sort of a few weeks. It's a sort of a slow start, so I haven't quite seen all aspects of it. Um, but we've gotten started on sort of building a or rebuilding the nursery there. Um, so I'm, I'm getting to use a lot of familiar skills. Um, and I think because of COVID, they've just stalled quite a bit. Um, so getting things up and running, um, they have a, a great seed collection. Uh, but getting to the outplanting phase will take a few months. Um, so it's sort of a, a sort of a yeah, starting up um, all the programs, so to speak. Um, and then I'll I'll have a chance to sort of help out in different aspects there that overlap. I think a little more on the cultural side as well. Um, so potentially mapping out some uh, sort of special trees and plants that uh, may have been. Uh, sort of cared for or were planted by uh, the patients and residents down there um, and so sort of gather, gather the stories of those as well. Um, so it's, I think it's, uh, it's merging the, the natural and the cultural side um, a lot here. And uh, I think coming up, I'll also get a little experience on the feral animal control side of things because uh, as you had mentioned, um, yeah, that continues to be a problem on the peninsula. Deer, pig, goat, um, but who doesn't have those issues? Um, <laughs> it's always a struggle. Okay, so I think we're we're coming pretty much up to the end of our uh, our uh, webinar tonight. Um, I'm going to give everybody one last chance to to ask a final question of Sebastian, if you'd like to. Um, and if um, going once, going twice. <laughs> if not, um, I will ask. So. I, I jokingly mentioned it at the start, but um, had you ever played the cello to the plants? And if not, why not? <laughs> yeah, no, I have not. And I, I agree, I should have. Um, 
it would have been great. Bring my cello up to the summit. Um, serenade that, the, that could the, have been the uh, the key to the Iliahis um, there you survival. Go. So yeah, that was the the missing element. They they would have popped up in a week. You you yeah. have an opportunity to to change that at Kalapapa. So I urge you to do so. Yeah. So um, I'll fix. Thank that. you so Love much. That. Those were those were really outstanding pictures and um yeah it, like as if as if you don't have enough skills like you're also an amazing uh photographer so thank you so much for taking time out of your friday night to speak to us thank you everyone for joining us and this is actually uh being recorded so um when it is available i will um share a link with irene and then she can pass it along to the rest of the members and anyone else who wants to view this. But um, otherwise, I um, I just wanted to, again, extend my big mahalo nui loa to you, Sebastian, for um, giving us such an excellent presentation tonight. And thank you, everyone else for joining us. And, uh, and please enjoy your weekend. Um, for some of us, it's a long weekend. And, uh, and uh, yeah, take care. Um, hopefully, Hopefully uh, you all get to meet in person the next time, but um, for those of us not on Maui, maybe that won't be such a good thing. That, but that'll until be then, exciting. Thank um, you all. Again. Best of luck in your uh, future, uh, Sebastian. I, I'm sure we're gonna be hearing more from you and um, everybody else, take care and uh, have a good evening. Aloha. Thank you, Sebastian. Thanks, Sebastian. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Nice seeing you all. Thanks, Sebastian.